Welcome back to another episode of the Thinker Nick podcast. I am your host, Nick Daniels, and I am joined by the lovely Nicola Tyler. How are you today, Nicola? Very well, thanks, Nick. That's good. Where are you? I am in Plettenberg Bay in the Western Cape, and it's just the most incredible day. Two oh, hour walk fantastic. on the beach this morning. Just beautiful here. I know. I had a brief phone call with you. It looked mm -hmm. beautiful. I wish I was there. Today's podcast, what we're going to dive into is topics. Basically, topics in all senses, but we're going to focus on choosing a topic in terms of podcasting. Mm -hmm. And just to kick things off, we decided that we were going to discuss my current situation in Vietnam, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as it's a very interesting topic. So... <laughs> Basically, in Vietnam at the moment, there is a strict lockdown. COVID-19 has come back into the country. It is the fourth wave. And I'm in Ho Chi Minh City, and it's crippling the city. Uh, we've been in a lockdown for two months now, and it's the, the restrictions are actually just getting more and more strict. We are on the final directive, which is the most strict it's ever been at the moment. People are not allowed to leave their houses. Wow. not even to get food. The military has been flown from the north to the south and they are pretty much uh, they are pretty much monitoring the city. They are carrying food to people's houses. They are at all the blockades. You literally can't do anything and you can't go anywhere. So it's very it's very stressful. It's very stressful because yeah, we can't really get out and I'm someone who likes to be active and get out and that. But we're surviving. So it's definitely a, a learning experience. Gee, it was. Yeah, um, it's, it's quite hectic. So yeah, so basically, we thought we'd start with that topic because it is, <laughs> it's quite interesting. I mean, I don't know what it's like for you in South Africa, Nicola, at the moment. We're sort of coming out of the third wave. There's been a big push nationally for people to get vaccinated. Interestingly, I think the younger people are sort of putting the elders to shame and they've all come out of the stalls running for the vaccination site. So the minute it got down to sort of 30 to 35, there was a big uptake in people wanting to take the vaccine. Interestingly, you know, some reticence on the part of um, older people to want to take the vax. So we've had a big push around vaccination rollout particularly after the unrest that we had a couple of months ago. Mm, yeah. The fourth wave hasn't been mentioned yet. It's interesting that you've got the fourth wave and you've gone into big lockdown. But I've never forgotten, um, I think it was Graham Codrington. He's a speaker here in South Africa. Actually, he's an international speaker as well. I don't think it was Graham or Anton, but it was either Anton Musgrave or Graham. And he, he basically said, you will get COVID. You basically, you will get it. So it's just basically a matter of when and and how severely. So uh, I, you know, the what I've been told is that the vaccine is not going to prevent you from getting COVID, but it just might prevent severe symptoms. Yeah. And the lot, the more the virus has an opportunity to mutate the more strains you get, the less efficacy you get in vaccines. So it's a bit of a catch-22. Yeah, for sure. And we don't have, we don't really know enough information on, no. on you know, the long-term effects. No. I was actually having the conversation the other night with a friend and he's just not getting it because, because whenever he got sick, he's always like, I've never taken antibiotics. I let my body fight it, which is mm. fair enough. Yeah. I have got the first jab. It was offered to me for free and I'm getting my second one soon. And I guess it, it's, I need it and I kind of need it in Vietnam at the moment because they're bringing in even more restrictions that if you're not vaccinated, you can't go to work. So it's kind of like, wow. it's a communist country. So it's kind of like human rights violation, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but yeah. 
So the first thing we want to talk about, there are five mm -hmm. key things we want to talk about with regards to choosing a topic, especially for right. a, a podcast. Yeah. And the first one, which is the most important, I believe, is mm -hmm. you've got to talk about something that interests you right. or that is a, a hobby, maybe. Mm -hmm. And the Think and Nick po podcast is all about us talking about uh, business related things, uh, you know, things that can can uh, expand my knowledge so that one day I can own a business or run a business. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting for me because I've tried a few things and I've and I, on my path to finally, when I finally do run a business, tried a few things and they've all interest me, but I've just, yeah, like, like I said in the previous podcast, just didn't quite work out. Right. So this came about and it's it's great because nicola has been in business for a number of years i mean do you want to do you want to maybe elaborate 20, on 24 years 24 years so it yeah. must it's, ob it's obviously interested you <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it was more by accident than by design it was definitely by design but staying in business was more by accident than Okay, really? Mm -hmm. So you were you kind of like forced into into just starting your own business or no, you couldn't work I mean, for someone? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one, one could say I was unemployable. No, way before I got involved in my own business, I, um, I worked for a bank in England. It's now called HSBC. <clears throat> in those yeah. days, it was Midland Bank. And that was okay. in the days when all banking activity was done at a branch level. It was before we had computers. So credit referencing, right treasury, securities, check processing, massive safe in the basement. Um, those were the <laughs> no days ways. When, yeah, yeah, it was, <laughs> it, was, uh, it, was like, it was like a mini bank in a building. Yeah, that's um, wild. We used to employ about 40 odd people, three different floors, including, and then a basement. Everything happened in that building. And then um, I also worked in public relations in London. I worked for an architect. I worked in a okay. jean shop selling jeans. <laughs> and also worked uh, for the seminar company that I mentioned in our first in or our sort of pilot show. Yeah, so yeah. I got l quite a lot of exposure to business before starting one. Mm, for sure. Yeah. So uh, what do you think the value of, you know, talking about something you're interested in when choosing a topic, what do you think? What do you think? Why do you think that's so important? Do you think well, it's important? First of all, actually, sorry. I do actually, because when you're interested in something, you pay attention. Mm -hmm. And when it's a hobby, it's done voluntarily. So you don't, a hobby is something you pursue because it appeals to you. You don't necessarily have to be great at it and you do it on a voluntary basis. You know, no one forces you to collect stamps. <laughs> yeah. That's your hobby. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not like you've got to be a stamp collector. So a hobby is a, <laughs> a self-elected thing. So I think in general, if, if it's a hobby and something that interests you, you voluntarily contribute time and energy and effort. So that's what you call sort of discretionary effort. And you put your discretionary effort into something. And then I think also when you're interested, what almost always happens is energy follows. So enthusiasm goes with interest. It's like, oh yeah, tell me more about that. That's really cool. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that's the first thing. The first thing is mm -hmm. we believe that you need to be interested or, yeah. or, or, or it could be a hobby because if it's a hobby, like Nicola said, you will be interested and you will want to pursue that. The second is to evaluate your goals mm -hmm. and that is also one of the most important things because you know you've mm -hmm. you've got to you've got to have a target that you want to reach you've got to kind of have some sort of direction as to where you're going mm -hmm. so nicola would you like to elaborate on evaluating goals so maybe what i can do is start with i'd rather start talking about goals before we talk about evaluating goals so a number of years ago, I was working in Abu Dhabi, which is in the United Arab Emirates. And I was working with a team of about 20 women and we were talking about goal setting. And when you teach goal setting, what you, the, the typical formula is you start with your values. 
then you start with your goals and then you start with your actions. So it's like, what's important to you in life? Set goals aligned with your values and then take action. And a story we used to tell was around a movie called Chariots of Fire. And I won't go into the detail of the movie, but it's a great movie to illustrate how a value and a goal can conflict. An example is, let's say you're a family man, but you want to travel the world on your own. So suddenly now you've got a goal to see the world on your own and be an adventurer, but one of your values is community and family. So at some point, something will always win. And the theory seems to suggest that your values will outwin your goals. So in an ideal scenario, your goals are aligned to your values so that you feel a sense of what we call congruence. So when you're doing something, you feel the concept of inflow, you feel in sync. You know, if you think of Viktor Frankl, you feel like you're living a purposeful life. So when you set a goal, what you're really trying to do is to bring life to what's important to you, your values. And a lot of people, I think, go to work and don't, don't necessarily have a job aligned to their values. And it's the thing companies battle with. And it's how do you get 20,000 people in a business to be aligned to the company values, which might contradict somewhat your values. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. it's almost as if when you start with goals, you've got to start with what's important to you first, then to set some goals. And if you're evaluating goals, it's like, at what point do you think your action is in contradiction with something that's important to you? In which case, mm. I would say 99% of the time, your values will win. Yes, for sure. Mm. All right, so just a little recap. Number one is to start your topic about something you're interested in. Number two is to set your goals and then obviously evaluate your goals. Mm -hmm. And Nicola, would you like to introduce number three for us? Sure. The third one is establish a focus. So energy flows where attention goes. So it's a focus is really about what do you want to pay attention to? It's almost like an objective. You, you, want, you want it to be clear. It's actually Zig Ziglar that said you can't hit a target that you cannot see. <laughs> So he spoke about, he said it's sort of in that text and drawl. And if you get to listen to the clip, it's a great one to listen to. So focus is what, what are you going to pay attention to? And then if you're paying attention, your energy will naturally follow. And then you just feel much more in sync. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, if you thought about what I said to you earlier, what would you like to focus on? It's like, what's important to you? Because yeah. what a focus does is it not only helps you pay attention, but it also helps you eliminate noise. And there's a lot of yeah. noise in the world today. So if you're, you know, if you're having dinner with your partner, are you giving them full attention or is the rest of the restaurant getting you distracted? Yeah. So the intention of focus is to pay attention. The intention mm. of focus is to pay attention. Yeah. yeah. Which is very important. And then number four, and this mm -hmm. only this only applies to if you are having a guest on the show, yeah. but you need to mm -hmm. plan accordingly for that guest. And yeah. the reason why I say this is because one, you need to figure out what you want to get out of the podcast or out mm -hmm. of the person coming onto the show. You mm -hmm. need to plan accordingly so you can get what you think the knowledge you require or that you aim to get out of that person. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is you also need to take into account what your listeners want to hear, you know, mm -hmm. what, what, what the audience wants to hear as well. So planning for a particular guest is also very important when choosing a topic for mm -hmm. the podcast. And when doing that, the, the, the second and third goals tie in there very nicely because then you can evaluate your goals. What do I want to, what, what is the goal? What are we doing? What are we talking about? Mm -hmm. And then we establish the focus. Mm -hmm. It also, I think if you've got your goal and a focus, whether you do that as point two or point three, it helps your guests prepare. If you say, right, we, let's, let's do a, let's do a podcast on financial planning, or let's do a podcast on 
forecasting. Well, let's do a podcast on building a social media profile. Obviously, the guests would probably bring some skills into that area or some experience, but it also helps you fine tune the message and the communication. Yeah. Yeah. It helps them very... prepare as well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that, and that also goes like that, that'll help the podcast just run smoothly mm -hmm. and get the most out of it. You know, that's the main goal. And then the last one is you need to decide what sets you apart when you are choosing, first of all, your initial topic. So mm -hmm. in our case, it's that what we believe sets us apart is that we have the advantage of youth and experience. <laughs> we have the advantage of youth and experience on our podcast. <laughs> yeah. And that's what we believe sets us apart because we, you know, I've done some research and looks around and there's not really many podcasts that, that, that have this, you know, so I'm kind of like the student in a sense where I'm here to learn, you know, I just, I just want to be a sponge and just absorb as much as I can. Been around the and block. Nicola, <laughs> <laughs> and Nicola is, you know, she's been in business for many years and now she feels that it's time that she can actually add value to me and to the listeners and give back, which is very important mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. It's interesting that I, I think it's that movie pay it forward. Um, a lot of people keep saying to me, Oh, write that book, write that book. I mean, I moved to Cape town 10 years ago to write that book. I still haven't written yeah. that book, but I've, I have actually written that book. I've probably written about three books. But I still haven't had the confidence or the courage to publish because it's, it's almost like, is it good enough? You know, is it, is it, or I, I might change my mind and say, well, I said that yesterday, but I might want to say something else tomorrow. <laughs> I, I feel like that's, mind. yeah, I feel like that's kind of when you really, when you put a lot of work into something, I feel like that's always going to be the case because I'll give you an example. When I edit mm -hmm. these podcasts or the audio and the video, it's never mm -hmm. perfect. It's just never yeah. perfect. And I'm like, and I can, I can watch it back a hundred times and I'll find something that I'm not happy with, or I want to change or I'm, and, and I mean, at the end of the day, I just, I get to a certain le a point where I just need to just call it that and then move on to mm -hmm. the next one. Yeah. Cause I mean, the content's still good. Mm -hmm. but it's just never perfect. And especially when you put a lot of work in, you just want it to be perfect. Yeah. But I, I actually, um, I had no idea that you had finished your book, which is very interesting. Well, finishing is perhaps a bit optimistic. What actually happened was about six or seven years ago, I recorded uh, a presentation that I did and I got an editor to, I had it transcribed and then I got an editor to edit it and I also contributed to it. So I would say we've got a first draft. And um, awesome. what I also decided to do is over the years, I've done a lot of work with Edward de Bono's tools. And it's a book on how to have a strategic conversation. And it's got a very deliberate framework. We've got lots of case studies. But having worked with Edward's material, there was a lot of uncertainty about how you could disclose some of his content. So I made a decision to take all the references to Edward's work out of the book and just see, could it stand on its own? And the answer is yes, it can. Okay. And I, uh, however, you know, Edward, as you know, has recently passed away and his son Casper's taken over the business. And I've had a quick conversation with Casper to say, what would it look like if we actually put Edward's work back into the framework and would it add value? So there's a possibility that that would happen, but it's more time than anything else. Okay. You know, so it's, okay. it, it's a straw man rather than a finished work. I see. But I did, I did write a book on a flight to Washington one year. You finished the whole I, book in one flight. Yeah, I did. But it was, it's a sort of a short My book, word. but I called it the little book of big advice. And then I've started to add to it over the years. So typically when I'm flying, I might write a short chapter. And it's more about the lessons that I've learned from working with different leaders, things that have cropped up. So if I compiled it, it's probably about 40, wow, 40 or that, so short stories, short observations. Yeah. 
That is awesome. So guys, all the listeners and viewers out there, keep an eye out for Nicola's book when it's finally <laughs> gets released. We will definitely be an- <laughs> we'll definitely be announcing it on the uh, podcast. I'm excited. Yeah. But yeah, mm-hmm. we yeah. So let's just recap what okay. we or the five points that we have discussed for the listeners. Mm-hmm. The first was you must start with something that you are interested in. Mm-hmm. That is definitely going to get the ball rolling. And as Nicola was saying, in terms of energy and flow, it's going to be super beneficial when you start planning for your goals, which is number two, right? Once mm-hmm. you plan for your goals, you need to evaluate them. And then number three, you need to establish a focus. Number four, and this only applies if you do have a guest, you need to plan for that guest. And the fifth one is to decide what sets you apart from everybody else. <laughs> and those are the five important things that we believe are going to guide you, in a sense, to mm-hmm. choose the correct topic for your podcast. For all the listeners out there, if you believe that there are, we missed a point, if you believe that there are other points that should be included in this, please reach out to us at thinkernick.pod at gmail.com. We'd be happy to take on some questions or suggestions and maybe chat about them in podcasts to come. Mm -hmm. But this is the end of today's episode. I'm your host, Nick Daniels. I want to thank you very much, Nicola Tyler, for coming on today. Pleasure. Lovely to see you again. And we will be back next week with episode number four. Take care. Bye. Cheers, Nick. Bye. For more news and content about Thinker Nick, go to www.thinkernick.com or visit our Facebook or Instagram pages at Thinker Nick.